Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for coming. I'm Denver Police Chief Ron Thomas. I'm here with Major Crimes Division Commander Matt Clark, uh, here to discuss and provide follow-up briefing on a critical incident that uh, occurred at uh, 19th and Blake on August 3rd um, after officers encountered an individual that uh, had a gun. Um, you know, thankfully, no one was injured uh, or no one seriously injured as a result of this incident. But before I turn it over to Commander Clark, I really would like to flag how this incident really represents um, the challenge that we face in downtown Denver with uh, people carelessly, uh, you know, using guns in, in downtown Denver. And I think the ongoing need for our, our continued mitigation efforts uh, in, in the central business district. So, uh, Matt. Good afternoon. I'm Commander Matt Clark with the Denver Police Department's Major Crimes Division. I uh, appreciate you being here and giving us an opportunity to provide additional information on the police officer-involved shooting that occurred Saturday, August 3rd, 2024, around 2 a.m. in the area of 19th and Market. Uh, this is intended to be a follow-up briefing uh, based upon information that we've gathered after interviewing numerous witnesses, uh, analyzing evidence collected from the scene, and speaking with the officer involved in this incident. There may be information that I don't know at this point, but to the degree we're able, we'll answer any questions uh, at the conclusion. Uh, on Saturday, August 3rd, 2024, around 2 a.m., uniformed Denver police officers were in the lower downtown area uh, conducting routine directed patrol related to the weekend uh, bar out crowd activities. Officers had just finished addressing a fight in the area of 20th and Blake Street when an officer heard a shot fired, possibly on Market Street. The officers made their way back to Market, and while in the parking lot of the 1800 block of Market Street, a passerby alerted an officer to a male standing next to a white Audi who had a firearm in his possession. Officers directed their attention towards the Audi and observed the male adjacent to the driver's door of the vehicle. As officers approached, they directed the male to show his hands, which were out of the view of the officers at the time, as they were behind the driver's door. Upon raising his hands, the officers observed the male holding a firearm in his right hand. He was holding the firearm by the lower grip area of the gun and the muzzle and the barrel of the firearm was pointed towards the ground at that point. Officers directed the subject to drop the firearm multiple times. The subject turned the firearm in such a way that the barrel, level, the, excuse me, the barrel was parallel to the ground and he moved the, the firearm to his left across his body and in doing so pointed the barrel of the firearm directly at the uniformed officers. Fearing the, off the individual was going to shoot at the officers, one officer fired one round from his duty handgun. The subject was struck by the round and dropped the firearm. He was taken into custody and immediately given medical treatment by the officers, which included the application of a tourniquet to his arm. The subject was transported by ambulance for treatment and has since been released from the hospital. The subject was a 24-year-old male who sustained a single gunshot wound to his right arm. At the scene, detectives recovered a black Glock 17 9 millimeter semi-automatic handgun with a magazine that had 10 rounds of ammunition in it. Investigators determined that one Denver police officer fired a single round from a duty handgun. Almost immediately after the police shooting incident, another series of gunshots can be heard behind the officers in the same parking lot. It was determined that multiple firearms were discharged in what appears to be an exchange of gunfire in that incident. The gunfire was separate from the police interaction with the subject and did not involve Denver police officers. A vehicle involved in that second incident left the scene and was involved in a crash near Lawrence and Broadway. Officers who responded to Lawrence and Broadway located two injured individuals. Uh, one sustained a gunshot wound to the abdomen and the other uh, had an injury related to the crash. Both are expected to survive. That second shooting is currently being investigated by the department's firearm assault shoot team. The officer who discharged their weapon uh, in this incident started with the department in 2017 and is assigned as a uniform patrol officer in District 6 on the anti-crime team. Uh, this officer and the others who were present with him all had body-worn cameras which were activated. They captured the interaction with the subject and, and to include the shooting. The involved officer will be on a modified duty status as he completes the department's reintegration program. As in any other critical incident, uh, it will be investigated by the Colorado Bureau of Investigations, the Colorado State Patrol, the Homicide Unit for the Denver Police Department, and the DA's office. 
These are all monitored by the Office of the Independent Monitor as well. Anyone with information about this incident uh, or video from the incident, uh, we would ask that they contact the Denver Police Department or Crime Stoppers. To provide some context, I'll show a couple of screenshots from the body-worn camera and give a photo, a crime scene photo, uh, that we captured for the firearm belonging to the uh, subject in this case. <clears throat> this is the parking lot in the 1800 block of Market Street. The subject is, uh, has the driver's door open. He's standing between that and the vehicle, uh, and he is not... Uh, his hands are not visible to the officers. This is where they're giving him direct commands to show his hands. The subject raises his hands. Again, he's holding the what appears to be the lower part of the grip of the gun, and the barrel of the gun is pointed towards the ground. The subject then, again, turned his hand, so the, the uh, barrel muzzle was now pointing upwards, parallel to the ground. He brings his right arm across his body uh, to his left, and in doing so, points the muzzle of that firearm uh, directly at the uniformed officers. This was the firearm uh, that was recovered at the scene that the subject possessed. You can now address any questions if you have any. Commander, I, I think that it, when you look at the video, if, if I saw what you described, could it have been that the person was trying to lift the gun up to get it around the window that was in front of him? Is that a possibility at all? So there's a number of possibilities for what he was doing with the gun. In the moment, um, based on the circumstances after hearing the shot fired, now seeing a gun, uh, the muzzle of a gun pointed directly at the officers, they feared that he intended to shoot them. Do you all think that perhaps he might have been involved in some sort of other confrontation with the individuals that were heard firing weapons in the background? We looked into that. Uh, we do not have a connection between uh, that the subject of the police shooting and the individuals who we have identified as being involved in the second shooting. Um, and we don't uh, have anything to indicate that he would have been involved in that second shooting had he not been contacted by police. On the police body cam video, he can be heard saying that it sounded, the audio was not all that clear, that he was trying to protect himself from something, or, or did you hear that? Or? Yes, sir. So he makes reference to, we believe, potentially the shot fired, which may have drawn the officer's attention to the parking lot in the 1800 block of market. Uh, I can also relate that during his interview with police, he made reference to um, observing a fight at some location. Um, and that could have um, been connected to his um, trying to get a firearm as well. Is it known if he fired that weapon at all before encountering police that night? Like within, had he fired that gun in the first few minutes before encountering police? I don't have any evidence of that. You guys referenced it, and Ben, if you have any questions. I'm yeah, sorry. do you have a name of the person who was shot? So at this point, the individual has been identified, but we're not releasing the name because he's not been charged at this point. Do you have that age? He's a 24-year-old male. And does he have a criminal record? Uh, we typically don't release criminal histories in these briefings. Why has, it, it would seem, I mean, why has he not been arrested or why has he not been charged with perhaps some sort of crime at this point? So we're still looking into um, his possession of the firearm, his storage of the firearm, uh, to make sure that if charges are appropriate, the appropriate charges are filed. And we're working with the district attorney's office on that. Um, it appears as if though there was some sort of other, I'm calling, you said gunfire being exchanged, a gunfight it seemed like. Yes, sir. Uh, is that what was happening? There were people firing at each other because of individuals that you mentioned that were hurt? So we have uh, evidence, uh, if we're speaking specifically of the second shooting, not related to the police interaction. In that parking lot, there was a separate shooting that occurred immediately after. There were multiple guns uh, fired at, at, it appears to be an exchange of gun to fire between probably two vehicles that were there. One vehicle fled and was involved in that crash with a parked car at Lawrence and Downing. Were any downtown cameras, did they capture any of that gunfight that took place between those cars? Um, I, I'm not sure I have specific video of the gunfight, but I have. I know we have video of the vehicles uh, fleeing, and, and that helped to identify some of the uh, participants. Were these individuals coming out of some sort of clubs from the area, or where were they coming from, or what was happening at the time? 
So I'm not sure where they were prior to being in the parking lot. Do you guys have any statistics regarding like the number of shootings that have taken place just right in that one area? We seem to recall going back there a couple of times now. Do you have that? Yes, thank you, Chief. That particular spot, what can you tell us about the shooting? So what I can tell you is that, uh, you know, obviously um, that the area has been chosen as one of our persistently violent hotspots. It was, uh, as you remember last year, a very violent uh, location. What we have seen is a significant reduction in violence in that location. Um, uh, do I think to some of our mitigation efforts and so we are seeing not just uh, reductions in uh, Violent crime throughout the city, but particularly in district 6 in the lower downtown area And I'll swing back around with your PIO to see if we can get some statistics to sure to our story. Uh, What has been happening down there since then in addition to the mitigation to make that area safer for the people mm -hmm. that enjoy the nightlife yeah, so um, as we've reported, I think in the past, um, there's a number of officers that are deployed down there on foot uh, in vehicles, um, you know, uh, engaging with the crowd, uh, walking through parking lots, uh, you know, at street corners, making themselves very visible, um, responding to things like you will see in the video where, uh, you know, when individuals, you know, come up and say that we believe that person has a gun, you know, checking those kinds of situations out. We've also, uh, as has been reported earlier, have um, uh, moved uh, the rideshare locations and kind of designated specific rideshare locations because we believe that the congregations that uh, occur as a result of people, you know, getting rideshare uh, from those destinations um, it causes some congestion and, and some concern there. We've also worked to improve lighting and also work to restrict areas where food trucks can, uh, can set up. It seems as though you're trying to disperse too large of a crowd gathering in any one place. Well, we recognize that when these, uh, when these crowds come out of these uh, uh, entertainment establishments and um, they, they congregate, um, that the likelihood of violence erupting is, is uh, quite likely. And so uh, we work to try to, to disperse those crowds as quickly as possible. Um, and it would seem as though our efforts have been quite fruitful, actually. Um, we've, we've been able to track um, a, a much faster uh, outcrowd and, and reduction of, of uh, large crowds. Um, over the weekend, it was incredibly violent. Five people killed in Commerce City, probably the deadliest weekend we've ever seen. They said um, six people in Adams County, a number of stabbings and shootings in one day, too. Um, when I spoke with the District Attorney Brian Mason, he said the Denver area is, quote, flooded in Despite all these efforts, mm -hmm. um, it still seems like a major problem. I would say that, yes, um, the tremendous number of guns in the metro area is a significant challenge and you know, one that we uh, deal with every day. Uh, we have recovered a significant number of guns. You know, I think we were um, setting record totals for a number of years in a row. Thankfully, this year, I think we're seeing a slight reduction. I think that that is due to some recent legislation as well as I think a lot of our efforts to uh, try to get people to be much more uh, responsible uh, with their weapons. And, um, you know, I think that those efforts will continue. It's such a chaotic scene and watching the uh, body worn camera, I was confused as to what's going on at first. He's got the suspect on the ground uh, shot in the arm and then there's more gunfire. Mm -hmm. and he's saying, get down, get down. Yeah. Uh, he's trying to render aid uh, while there's another gunfight going on. Mm -hmm. uh, it just seems somewhat emblematic I worry about my officers every day, and uh, you know, and I, I I commend them for coming to work every day and, and working in a tough environment like that. But uh, you know, it just goes to show um, that uh, one, they're resilient; two, um, they're dedicated to their profession. And I think you can see, you know, we had one officer fire one shot, which I think is um, emblematic of the 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 training that they have received and, and the understanding that um, that this is a very um, dynamic situation and I think they're um, learning to be much more mindful of their backdrops and things like that and so I think that that's why while there were a number of officers there only one of them fired. And to pick up on that, your officers were there as there was a gunfight going on in the background trying to help this person. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. Whereas, are there any charges filed? in that other 
shooting that was taking place between the two cars. Can you release any names of people who were arrested in that case, if there were arrests? So uh, that's an ongoing investigation. We have, uh, we believe we have the individuals involved in that identified. We're just working to uh, more clearly understand their role to determine what charges are appropriate for them. So no arrests have been made at that point or at this point.